The Ravens Preview Show with Andy Poland starts right now. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't pretty. But it was the Ravens. Listen to all Ravens broadcasts right here on 630 AM, the ESPN 630 app, or ESPN 630 DC.com. And with 117 left to play, the haze in the barn. Now, here's Andy Poland. The Ravens finally back home this week. One o'clock kickoff against the Detroit Lions. Our coverage here on ESPN 630 will start at 1230. On Sunday afternoon, we're joined by Brian Wacker, who covers the Ravens for the Baltimore Sun. Uh, how, how anxious are they to be back uh, back at home after being not just on the road, but out of the country last week? <laughs> Good morning. Well, thank you uh, for having me on. And yes, uh, I think they're. I think to a man, the Ravens are happy to finally be back on East Coast time and seem to have finally adapted. Uh, to the time change, back in their own beds, back in their own country. So, uh, but you know, no easy task, obviously, with the five and one Detroit Lions right. coming to town and first game in about a month at M and T Bank Stadium. Now, as I understand it, the Ravens had the option to take this as a bye week since they played at London and elected to take it later in the season. Do you know the the thinking behind that? Yeah, my understanding generally is. Um, that teams have an option to take the buy early or late. And, you know, the way John Harbaugh explained it was, you know, I, I think they'd prefer the later buy, um, which of course they'll have, I believe in, uh, in week 13 or thereabouts is their bye week. Um, you know, but it, it's not quite as cut and dry. My understanding is, is saying, Hey, let's have a buy. Uh, after London, I think certainly uh, the option is perhaps there. But again, you don't know how the rest of the schedule is going to lay out. Mm-hmm. You know, they played three AFC North road games in the first five weeks. So, um, you know, they seem to prefer to buy, and uh, we'll find out if there's any jet lag, certainly. Uh, this Sunday. Yeah, and they're playing a team that's playing very well, and they're, they're kind of mirror images of the, of the way they play, kind of that hard-nosed, uh, tough style. The Ravens are coming off 24 the hard way. You look at 24 points, you go, oh, yeah, three <laughs> touchdowns and a field goal. No, no, no. Six Justin Tucker field goals and a missed extra point. How much of a concern, or maybe maybe it's not, maybe knowing that you have the best kicker in the history of the NFL, you're you're not maybe as aggressive as you are as you could be in the red zone. Um, you know, how much of this field goal kicking is a result of ineptitude getting the ball in the end zone, and how much of it is that they just have so much faith in Tucker that he's going to get you three anyway? Well, I look, they certainly have faith in Justin Tucker. He's the most accurate kicker in NFL history. That said, uh, I think there is concern. You know, I talked to a number of players and coaches this week. You know, John Harbaugh called the offense a work in progress. Mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson said they've been, quote, inconsistent. And running back Gus Edwards, he said it's kind of like a fire right now and everyone is eager to put it out in terms of their offensive struggles. We saw that um, last week in the red zone six times, only scoring one touchdown. Now, this is a team that came into that game leading the NFL and scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm not sure if this is a one-week issue uh, or if it's a two-week issue or a larger issue. But you look at the offensive numbers for the Ravens, and look, there's no way around this. They have to be better by their own admission. Um, they spent more money on offense than any team in the league. A lot of that, of course, has to do with Lamar Jackson's massive contract extension. But this is a team that's 15th in the league in scoring with 22 points, uh, point two points per game. You know, 339 yards of offense per game doesn't even crack the top 10 in the league. I think the expectation coming in, into this season, certainly from the outside, was that this is going to be an explosive offense when you look at all the pieces, Lamar Jackson, Odell Beckham, Nelson Aguilar, Dave Flowers, uh, the running game. Now, that said, you know, they've had some issues. Of course, J.K. Dobbins goes out in week one with a season-ending injury. They've had a couple of offensive linemen get injured this season. And, um, you know, so the guys have missed time there. Odell Beckham and, and Rashad Bateman, you know, two receivers at the counting on, they've both missed time. Even the ever-reliable Mark Andrews missed the game this season. So it hasn't quite clicked. They're well aware of it. But I think at this point, six games into the season, it is a concern. 
Um, you know, I think this is a great litmus test for them, probably their best litmus test of the year to this point because the Detroit Lions are the most complete team, offense, defense, that they have faced at this point. All the teams that they've played up until this point, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, they've all had injury issues and, and other uh, concerns. So uh, to me, this, is, this will be a, a real telling week in terms of where the Ravens are at in terms of their progress. Talking to Brian Wacker, covers the Ravens for the Baltimore Sun. Uh, Lions number one against the run. Ravens have had relatively good success uh, running the ball. I guess a lot of that related to Lamar Jackson. Uh, But on the other side, uh, Jared Goff very quietly has become one of the best quarterbacks in the league. A, A discard by the Rams. And and he's there's even talk right of him being the MVP of the league. So what about the matchup of the Ravens defense against what is a surprisingly good Lions offense? Yeah, that I think is certainly one of the highlights of this game. Uh, as you mentioned, you know this is a Detroit team that's explosive, dynamic, between um, guys like Jared Goff, Amos St. Brown. Uh, the running game, which, of course, David Montgomery doesn't sound like will play this week, but uh, they'll have Jameer Gibbs back, mm-hmm. it appears. So this is a team with a lot of explosive talent on offense, and this is a Ravens defense that's leading the NFL in sacks, which is fascinating because they don't really have that prototypical 12, 14 uh, sack per year edge rusher. They're sort of doing it by mixing and matching. They've got 11 guys with at least one sack. Um, you know, they've, their leading sack uh, getter is Jadavian Clowney and, and Justin Matabike. Those guys have four and a half each. So, you know, they're kind of mixing and matching. They've got Kyle Hamilton in there with three sacks of safety. So they're, they're getting it from all over the field in terms of quarterback pressures and sacks. That said, this is a team also that's had some secondary issues. They've had some injuries. Uh, and they've got some injury concerns going into this game with, without safety Marcus Williams, uh, it, it appears. And, uh, you know, they're a little bit thin um, when it comes to that. Marlon Humphrey just came back mm-hmm. from foot surgery a couple of weeks ago. So there's certainly some question marks, I think, for this Ravens secondary uh, going against a team like Detroit and Jared Goff. All right, I, I see that the Ravens are three-point favorites for this game. I didn't check the over-under, but whatever it is, you, right, you got to go under for a game like this, don't you think? I would think so. Um, you know, and the NFL has been weird this year. We've right. seen scoring down really across the league. So games where you would expect uh, a lot of up and down the field and a lot of points on the board hasn't always been the case. So, um, you know, look, I, I think between the Ravens' defense – and the Lions defense, which, you know, perhaps comes in a little bit underrated, I think, yeah, you've got to lean probably toward the under on this game. Uh, it's a little surprising, frankly, that the Ravens are a three-point favorite. I guess the home field playing a factor in that. Uh, the over-under, by the way, looks like it's around 42, which mm. is pretty low. So that tells you uh, what the odds makers think yeah. of, of how this one's going to play out. So. Uh, Vegas is usually pretty good on these things, as we know. Uh, those buildings didn't build themselves, so uh, I think it, I think you know expecting it to be around 42 or even less uh, certainly wouldn't be a shock. Yeah, I, I would think it would come down to a Justin Tucker field goal, and unlike the meeting two <laughs> years ago, it's going to be outdoors. So I don't even know if you try yeah. a 66 yarder. You may have to, but uh, yeah, it's, it's probably going to come down to that. Probably a field goal. Uh, I think the Ravens are going to win. What's your, what's your thoughts on uh, who wins this game? Well, I'm going to stick with my original prediction and say, uh, or I should say my most recent prediction, because going into the season, I had this down for a win for the Ravens. Sure. I just thought um, this was a, a team that had uh, the Ravens, had a lot of pieces and a lot of promise. And, you know, this is what happens. You've had a number of injuries. You've had them shoot themselves in the foot a number of times. Detroit has obviously um, continued really from where they left off last season, probably even better the last season, frankly. So I'm actually going to go with Detroit winning a close one. So I think this, again, I agree with you. I think this comes down to probably a field goal, you know, maybe maybe a four-point game at the most, mm-hmm. somewhere in that range. But I could certainly see a, a, a 21-17 type of game uh, in favor of the Lions here. 
Thank you, Brian. Enjoy the game. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. That's uh, Brian Wacker, Baltimore Sun. And uh, Ravens preview again the game here on ESPN 630, starting with pregame at 1230. Greg Cosell weighs in on this. Devin McCourty, plus what J- Jada- uh, Jadavian Clowney says, uh, who has been a big addition to the Ravens coming in late, uh, and what he says about uh, how they're preparing for what he says will be the best offense they've played this year by far. Stay with us. It's Ravens preview on the Andy Pollard Show, ESPN 630. Ravens on three, one, two, three. This is the Ravens preview show presented by Verizon. Here's Andy Polin. Ravens finally back home. First time in a month. They played in London last week. Back home for a one o'clock kickoff against the Detroit Lions on Sunday. Covered here on ESPN 630. We'll get underway at 1230 with the pregame show. If you're just jumping in your car, you miss Brian Wacker, who covers the team for the Baltimore Sun. He likes the Lions to win in a close game. I like the Ravens to win in a close game, coming down to a Justin Tucker field goal, though not a 66-yarder, which he kicked at the gun at Detroit two years ago, which was the last meeting between the two teams. The Ravens lead the series 5-1. to one. They have met six times since the team moved from Cleveland to Baltimore in the mid-'90s. The last Detroit win was in 2005, 35-17, and with the Tucker field goal two years ago, the Ravens won 19 to 17. That was one of four that he kicked on the day. He had six of them last week. And uh, it addresses, yes, he's a money kicker, but it also addresses the fact that the Ravens are having trouble getting the ball in the end zone. Greg Cosell analyzes film. He's one of the top guys doing this, uh, has done it for ESPN for a number of years. I don't know who he's doing it with now, but uh, this was his analysis with Colin Coward after looking at the film and what he sees coming up on Sunday between the Ravens and the Lions. This is a fascinating matchup, but I think Lamar's played really, really well this year. Um, I think he's clearly settling into this offense. Uh, I still feel the offense in the past game is a work in progress, going through growing pains. Not Lamar necessarily, the offense. Um, I don't think this offense has expanded into what it can be, but I think Lamar is a very comfortable player. I think he's seeing it well. I think he's going through reads. Um, But now they're playing against a Lions defense, and I think Aaron Glenn deserves a ton of credit. He made dramatic changes from a year ago. He started out with a ton of man coverage, a ton of pressure, found out it didn't work with his personnel. This year they're much more zone heavy. He's starting to move people around. He understands uh, that Hutchinson can be moved around. Jack Campbell, the rookie from Iowa, he can play in multiple positions. Um, I think Alex Anzalone is a top five linebacker in the league this year. He, He doesn't come off the field. He's played really, really well. So, you know, I think that this is a real interesting matchup um, of a defense that has pretty good speed, plays a lot of zone against Lamar, who obviously is throwing it really well, but we know he can hurt you anytime with his leg. Yeah, so he's uh, he's the dual threat, and that's what uh, Detroit will have to deal with as the uh, Ravens will have to deal with a quarterback, Jared Goff, who's playing very well. Uh, he is leading the league, I'm sorry, third in the NFL in quarterback rating, 105.1, and uh, he has gotten in the discussion for MVP. Devin McCourty is part of the football show on uh, the NFL Network, Good Morning Football, and uh, and he has a look at, at what he sees uh, from a defensive player's perspective, having just retired from the NFL, between the Ravens and Lions Sunday. I look at the Baltimore Ravens, what they stand for, playing good defense, a tough team. Harbaugh has been around there for a long time. You look at what the Lions are becoming, what Dan Campbell has brought in. He is trying to build a franchise and a team with a mindset that we're going to go anywhere, on the road, at home, overseas, wherever it takes place, and we're rolling in there to kick you in the teeth. He's in bite kneecaps, but that's the mentality that they want to have, a tough-nosed football team that will run the ball, play really good defense, and find ways to win, a sloppy type of win. That's what Baltimore has been all about. Mm-hmm. I remember a few weeks ago you were saying, I'm watching a Ray Lewis sit down with Roquan Smith, and they're yeah. watching – and they're talking about what it means to be a Raven. And it's a linebacker running downhill, smacking somebody in the mouth. Roquan Smith said this week, it was like, yeah, they're playing good football, but I come from the show-me business. So when we get out there, they're going to have to show me mm. that they're that good. So this is the type of matchup that I'm fired up to see because these are two teams that want to play the same style of football and beat you out there. Called a slobber knocker. Uh, we'll see what happens on the on Sunday, the uh, one of the things that's been a big surprise for this Ravens defense this year is Jadavion Clowney. Now, when he was coming out of South Carolina in 2014, uh, he was looked at at the same way we looked at Chase Young when he came here a few years ago. And uh, most famous for that 
hit in the bowl game where he hit the running back uh, for Michigan and his helmet went flying. I mean, he was a spectacular player at South Carolina. He's dealt with some injuries, including in his rookie year with Houston when he only played four games. Uh, He left Houston after the 2018 season when he was an All-Pro. Wound up going to Seattle, lasted only one year there, then to Tennessee for a year, then to Cleveland for two years, and then the Ravens signed him just before the start of the season. He's still only 30 years old, and he wants to prove that he's got something left in the tank, and through six games, he has. He leads. He's tied for the lead with two and a half sacks on the season. He had, uh, uh, excuse me, four and a half sacks, and he had two sacks last week against Tennessee, and uh, he's he's saying, you know, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm not over the hill yet. I want to show these guys I still got uh... – talent left and uh, a lot of game left and uh, me coming here being a part of this group man they just bringing the best out of me like like I say the work is come easy when you're enjoying it and uh, it's like you can tell everybody out here enjoy coming to work every day like I said and it's rubbing off on me and I just keep keep having fun yeah well, Ravens are known as as a good place to play and he's been a, he's been a big addition since the start of the season as for the offense that he's going to face on Sunday here's his look at that I think Jared Goff makes some of the smartest passes, the smartest plays. I'm, he he out there calling the shots, and uh, the offensive line, that's a good group. They put it together. A lot of first-round draft picks up there, a lot of guys that can move to a defensive line. And, uh, it's going to come down to that in this game. Uh, they front versus our front, and we know that going into this game and who going to dominate the line of scrimmage, and uh, I think that's what we're going to have to do. What do you think about, I mean, it's been three weeks on the road, including London, and now you're coming back to face a pretty good Lions team. Are you are you good with the no buy uh, coming back after uh, London? Oh yeah, I'm cool. Uh, man, it's next 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 team up, man. I think uh, as a Raven playing here, I think we prepare for it. Uh, like I said, Mike put us in position to be prepared for them games, and he's doing a good job as of right now. Uh, we're gonna be ready to go. We better be. Um. Yeah, by far. Yeah, Jeff Goff make them go. I think he's a smart, smart quarterback, and their running back game, their run game has been very, very dominating so far. And and they get a lot of turnovers. Really making they they play with the lead, and it's it's easy for you to play with the lead. It's gonna come down to us up front, like I said, play dominate the line of scrimmage and getting after the quarterback. Well, here's how this matchup goes: Ravens lead the league in sacks with 24. Lions have given up the fewest sacks with 10 on the season for a quarterback who's not really known as being mobile. So uh, that that is going to be fascinating to watch as to how much pressure they're able to put on Jared Goff. Uh, John Harbaugh, uh, and he's, I don't know why he's playing it this way, but uh, here you had Clowney say this is our, our biggest challenge we faced offensively so far. Uh, Harbaugh is not getting into that business. Yeah, I'm not really rating the, the challenges. I mean, they're all they're all the ones that, that you face. They seem like the one that comes up is the toughest one. You know, that's how you feel about it. But I think they're obviously they're very good. They've got one loss. They're leading their division. Um, they've won the, the recent games by large margins. I mean, they haven't even been in a close game. I don't think since since early in the season. Uh, they're you know tough. They're physical. Uh, they're they're uh, they're legit. So we're looking forward to the game. Can't wait to get out there and play. Yeah, the uh, the schedule from here, especially if you win this, it sets up pretty nicely. They go to Arizona next week, and then they come home to face Seattle. Not that those are you know easy teams to beat, but uh, if you keep the the momentum going there, then you got another big divisional matchup on November twelfth at home against the Browns, and that's really the only team that they've dominated this year. They beat the Browns earlier in the season, October first, twenty eight to three. Uh, other games have been closer. The two games that they lost, you know, you could argue that they beat themselves. Th- those really, the, the loss at home to the Colts on September 24th, 22-19, to and then the game they lost uh, on October 8th at Pittsburgh, 17-10. to It uh, shows you from the scores that they're having trouble getting on track offensively. Everybody says, oh, once the uh, Todd Munkin uh, offense kicks in, that uh, that things will improve for them. But, um, you know, you're getting to the meat of the schedule and you'd like like to see them improve there. Uh, really, down the stretch, this, this, this schedule at the end of the season, it gets really tough um, because after you get through playing the Browns at home, then you, uh, then you get the Bengals coming in. The Bengals, as Joe Burrow continues to get more and more healthy, another big division game. Then you go play the Chargers on the road, 
That'll be a night game on November the 26th. Then you're home against the Rams. Rams better than expected. We saw Jacksonville win last night. They got to play there on December 17th. Then they go to San Francisco on Christmas Day, play them. Dolphins are coming into the uh, M&T Bank on, on New Year's Eve. And then they close out the season against the Steelers. So there's really, aside from maybe the, the Cardinals, but that's on the road. That's a team that, that they definitely should beat. Um, I don't know if there's any anything left on the schedule where you say that's a game that the Ravens, you know, should should be able to cruise. Now, if if the offense kicks in, if this Todd Munkin offense that everybody talks about how how long it's taking to to uh, to gel and all that, if that's if that's going at that point in the season, that's something else because the defense is playing very very well. But uh, that that's going to be that's going to be interesting to watch to see where they are as an offense as they uh, head into the last two months of the regular season. Now, uh, Ravens against interconference opponents for whatever this means, they have the best record at home since 2008 against NFC opponents. They are 24 and seven, and uh, you know Lions coming over from the NFC, so you know there is that. But. Uh, should be should be an interesting game. As it should be a game that's very low scoring. The uh, the two teams play very good defense. They like to run the ball, and uh, it could be a, a very tough defensive game coming up one o'clock on Sunday. We got our coverage here as we always do uh, with pregame one, one half hour before the game twelve thirty right here on ESPN six thirty. So I want to thank uh, Brian Wacker for coming on the show. A little preview there. For the Ravens and the Lions on Sunday, thanks to Rex Mintern for running the show. Thanks to all of you who listen. Tony is coming up next with an insert from me. And other than that, I will see you back here on Monday morning at 9 a.m.